Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to show you how I prepare these engines on a budget. The M52 TU and the M54 series engine. As far as a budget goes, I'm literally pressure washing parts in the backyard and I am assembling the engine in the basement of my own home. So it's a pretty budget friendly little refresh here. I want to show you how I assemble these engines, how to replace certain gaskets, uh, mainly just the major ones. Basically just the necessities that I feel necessary to replace with the, with the engine tore apart and things like that. Now you're going to notice that certain parts, like the camshafts and the block, are not my usual work. Usually I clean them meticulously and get them super bone clean. But, in this case, budget mindset. Okay? This will be a pretty fun video, pretty long. But, I'm not going to put any advertisements in the middle of this video. I absolutely hate that. I'm going to put advertisements in the beginning and only the end. Nothing in the middle. Middle. We don't want that. So without further ado, let's get into this budget refresh. So here is the oil pan after uh, some pressure washing, a little bit of scrubbing. Mainly you want to be worried about the inside of the oil pan. Get a, as much of the varnish as you can out. Realistically, you shouldn't have to do, do it this clean, but I'm kind of picky. So the outside, you can also do pretty well. I didn't go crazy with it, but clean up pretty nice. All right, let's go here and discuss this engine now. What stands before us here is a M52 TUB28. As you guys know, my favorite non me 46 engine. We'll discuss that in a little bit as to why. But today's video is going to be focusing on certain things to look out for while you're tearing down these engines and how certain uh, parts work in these engines, including the oiling system. So, uh, whenever you remove the cylinder head from these, it's very common uh, that these blocks, they will pull uh, threads during retorquing of the head. More commonly, if the engine was overheated, because it actually ruins the temperament of the... Uh, the threads in here okay i want to discuss one big issue with these uh engines it is widely known amongst the communities uh is going to be the oiling the oiling system the oil pump more prominent on the 30 liter although they will all do it the oil pump nut tends to back off what causes that do you think so where it all starts is the chain begins to stretch and these non-m blocks having no sort of chain tensioner it begins to sort of like, uh, it acts like a whipping motion whenever you're hitting rev limiter. It also does not help to have a worn crankshaft sprocket. As you can see, there's like a rubber inlay built onto it. This is a used one. You can see the markings of the chain in the rubber. So this being worn paired with a stretched oil pump chain it is going to wreak havoc if you, keep, if you constantly smack rev limiter. You can actually snap your oil pump shaft. So bare minimum, if you have your oil pan off, it's wise to bare minimum at least replace your chain now these for factory are a solid chain there's no master link so if you're not removing your timing cover or messing with that stuff there's still an option to replace that chain you can buy a split chain which takes a master link from the company called iowas what that involves is simply i'm going to probably just grind the nub off of this chain and just separate it and run the new chain up through and master link it i'll show you how to install that because i have one coming in the mail supposedly today we'll see so here is an exploded view of an oil pump, so you can see how they work. This one's from an M54. Here's your oil pump housing. Here is one of the gears. I'm not sure what they call this style of gear. It all just works with, uh, I think the proper term is like hydrostatic. Out, it's, There's no gaskets to this besides the pickup tube O-ring. There's no gasket sealing this. There's no gasket that seals the housing to the block. It seals by its own means with the oil. Pretty cool. Then you have this gear here which goes in obviously goes in here it almost mimics a power steering pump i believe internally and also something cool is when it comes to these m52 tu engines they have the oil pump and they have the uh windage tray all one big assembly i'm waiting for the new o-ring because if you tear this apart removing your oil pickup tube definitely definitely buy a new o-ring or you very well may have oil starvation issues once my packages come in the mail, I'm going to show you some reassembly action of these engines. And here we are the following day. Some parts did arrive, including the head gasket and some other miscellaneous things. So I'm going to focus on that today. I'm going to focus on getting the cylinder head back on the block. Now to do that, uh, very, very important to prep the surfaces adequately, get them nice and clean. All I do is I take a razor blade and I will scrape along the mating surfaces, both the head and, both, both the, head and the block. This does excellent at removing gasket material. Then once you're done, done scraping and everything, take some microfiber rags, some acetone, and get everything just super clean and dry. Also, if you're by yourself like I am, 
I like to tape or zip tie the timing chain to the main guide here, and it just holds it upright like that. Because when we go to when we go when we go put the head back down while you're by yourself, it's very hard to maneuver this guide through that port. So whenever you tape it or zip tie, it naturally just wants to hold it up with the chain. Also, directly before you place a head gasket on this block, you want to take uh, some RTV silicone and you want to put a bead across this crevice here between the timing cover and the block to seal it up. So, both mating, both mating points right here, some RTV, some RTV here. And also, one last quick thing, uh, depending how in-depth you're going with your engine rebuild here or refresh, there is a replaceable oil check valve here in the cylinder head. They're about 50 bucks brand new. This is a little check valve and they are serviceable. Okay, here we are. We're going to do the final torque pass on the cylinder head. And in my case, with this specific head bolt that I've chosen, the final pass torque is only 64 foot-pounds. That seems very low, but I will explain later. So we're going to check these real quick. You want to just gently lean into it. There's one. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and number fourteen up here in the corner. Now the reason I'm only torquing these 64 foot-pounds for the final pass is because I'm not using the OEM head bolts. Believe it or not, the OEM head bolts, they actually begin yielding as low as 60 foot-pounds anyway. Whenever you're done using a torque wrench, always put, always put, put it back down to zero because you can wear out the internal springs if you don't. So the head bolts I'm using are an Allen head, as I'm sure you've seen. An Allen head cap bolt right here. Is a 12.9 grade Allen head cap bolt, uh, a thread pitch of M10 by 1.0, and a length of 110 millimeters. I'm also using that with the OEM head bolts, head bolt washers, just like that. Now it is important to take these washers and actually put oil on them, lubricate them. I'll put them in a container as such, pour some oil in there so they're sitting all nice and getting all lubed up. That is because during the torquing of your cylinder head, you want it to be nice and smooth. No excessive friction while you're torquing that head bolt down, right? We're also going to lubricate roughly 30 millimeters of each head bolt with engine oil to also help it thread down to the block nice and smooth as you're torquing down this head. I do them one at a time with an engine with an engine oil weight of 10W40. I found to be best for these. Uh, 5W weights seem to be a little bit too thin. 1040 seems to be just a real nice sweet spot to get real nice smooth torquing. There's also two more bolts you cannot forget about. They are up in this upper corners here of the, of the cylinder head. They are two E8 bolts, meaning external torque socket number eight. Now, when it comes to other things on this engine I've replaced so far, it's going to be the heater pipes. Right here and right here. This upper one holds into the cylinder head with a number, with a number, yeah, with a 10 millimeter nut, and then it's retained to the block using a 13 millimeter bolt. This lower heater pipe, two 13 millimeter bolts. Now, this is a good key note is for all-wheel drive V46s, 325XI and 330XI, this heater pipe is different as they have different engine mount arms, okay? It's going to bolt to the arm of an XI. Whereas rear-wheel drive have a different style bracket here, so they are different. Keep that in mind. We also have the knock sensors for bank one and bank two. They come to one plug right here. Intake, intake camshaft positioning sensor right here. Retained to the head using a 5mm Allen bolt, I believe that size was. Then a crankshaft positioning sensor right here, once again gets retained to the block with a 5mm Allen. It's simply not put in yet. I now want to discuss uh, the oil pump and oil chain and stuff like that down there. So I'll show it to you real quick. And here we are. Here's our brand new oil pump chain and our brand new oil pump nut with the safety wire method done to it. Now as a recap, if you're not removing your timing cover and things like that, I still recommend you to replace this, this chain bare minimum. And how to do that is, because these are solid chains from factory, you're going to have to take a grinder and cut these little nubs off to help you disassemble this chain so you can obviously remove it from your crankshaft sprocket. And then you'll be replacing that with a linked chain with a master link. And you'll want to install this locking clip. You want the closed side of it 
to face the direction of travel. Now, as far as the oil pump nut goes, has the safety wire method done to it. Uh, as we know, this nut is reverse thread. You turn it to the right to loosen it, as depicted here. Uh, we're going to take the safety wire and we're going to wrap it tightly and act as and act as if though we were tightening this nut with it, like, Urgh. and then you're going to wrap it to the sprocket here and, and wrap it. Obviously, after you've already torqued the nut, I torque these to 20 foot pounds. They call for 18, but I do 20 just to be safe. You can also use some red Loctite or red thread locker on the threads of the oil pump shaft before you thread it on and, and torque it. This is the same method used by uh, aviation mechanics for certain aircraft, so fasteners can't back out. So, also in this case, works awesome. I am now going to uh, install the oil pan on the bottom of this crankcase, so we'll get into that next. Okay, I'm now going to prepare the mating surfaces of the oil pan and the block. And also, just like the cylinder head, before you put on the oil pan gasket, once again, the timing cover where it meets the block, you have this line right here. We're going to take some RTV gasket maker and once again just put a small line right across the two. Okay, once you're satisfied with how clean you got your mating surface, as you can see, there's some rust staining. That is simply from the last oil pan gasket. They have a steel layer to them. It just rusted and it happened to stain the aluminum. That's all that is. There's also one thing I forgot to mention, uh, where you put RTV up here for the timing cover, where it meets, you also want to go back here to the rear main seal housing, where it meets the block. You also put some RTV along its seam so it can seal. Just put a little, you don't need much, just a little dab like that. That's all you really need. A little dry piece in there. I'm just going to like kind of dab it into the crevice. Gonna lay this on just like so. Break down on there. Line up all of the holes. Take your nice fresh clean oil pan. Spin it around. Set her on. Like that. Now the next feat, I'm going to probably prepare the oil filter housing to bolt onto the side of this block. We're going to get this surface cleaned up, We're going to build, bolt on the oil filter housing assembly. And there we have it. So the gasket in question is this right here is what seals the oil filter housing to the block. Okay, let's go ahead and get this, uh, this gasket out of here. Simply take a pick tool like this, get underneath it somewhere and just work it out of its little home or channel there's the old gasket take your new gasket gonna just lay the gasket in here just gonna kind of knead it the whole way around make sure it stays in there this little black thing right here this is an an anti drain back valve so it's gonna hold oil in the in the housing at all times this is a little, it uh, has a spring behind it. Whenever you actuate it, oil would come flying out if it was full. It's just an anti drain back valve. Let's go ahead and bolt it onto the engine. Okay, there are six bolts in which mount the oil filter housing to the block two, four, and six. They're going to be three different size bolt lengths here. Got this long one, medium, and short ones. It's very easy to tell where they go once you get the housing on and you put them in one by one. They should all be equal lengths from the surface of the oil filter housing, okay? Going to place it onto the block. I'm going to double check the gasket one last time, make sure it's good. I'm going to take our bolts. We're going to look. This long one obviously is going to go right here, right? It's going to stick in just like that. These medium length ones will find the next most meaty spot. Looks to be right here 
there's two mediums and right here. The rest should all be the shorter size ones. They are all 13 millimeter fasteners and they get torqued to 18 foot pounds. There we go. Now I'm gonna grab my torque wrench and once again, we're going to torque this down into like a crisscrossing type pattern to make sure we seat this evenly. I like to start with this one here. There's not much at all. See that's that right there? That's 18 foot pounds, okay? That's it. Just like that. Thread it down in. I'm now going to begin placing the camshafts in the cylinder head. But before we do that, we must place this bottom end and top that center, meaning cylinder one, the whole way up within its bore. We have this O, a line, this line and a T. This middle line, we need to align with a mark on the timing cover, which you cannot see because of the lighting. So here's a flashlight. Do you see the mark on the timing cover now? Here, right there it is. We want to align it with the that center line on the crankshaft. That indicates that this bottom end is in top of the center. If you're being ultra picky, you can remove the spark plug from cylinder one, take something long, and stick it directly into the cylinder board here so it hits the top of the piston. You can then spin, you can then spin your crankshaft and watch that go up and down, up and down. You want this extension or screwdriver to come the whole way up at its highest possible peak, and you want to stop it there. Now, a very, a very important key note is if you're going to be spinning this crankshaft with this timing chain, freely freely uh, rotating here do not let it droop do not let it sag you actually want to take your finger purple, uh, your thumb or something or your hand you want to let it spin in your fingers like this while you're spinning the crankshaft if you if you allow this chain to drop in there and spin while you're spinning this it's going to bind and it's going to snap your timing chain guides which i've done before so i'm giving you guys fair warning we have to now prepare the the camshaft trays here, we have to place the hydraulic valve lifters, which are in these buckets here, resting in oil. I'm going to show you the steps of putting them in, and then installing the trays into the head, and then the camshafts going in. And then also you can see the Vanos components here, the Vanos sprockets and things like that. I will break those down and install those piece by piece when it comes time. Okay, I'm going to start placing these lifters into the camshaft trays. I'm going to take them one by one. Let them uh, drip dry for a few moments here. I'm just going to place them into each bore of the camshaft tray, just like that. They should just freely plop in there as you're doing so. Okay, these are now ready to go into the head. Here's our cam tray ready to go in. Now, as you can see, the engine on the stand is almost totally sideways. That is to help us battle gravity. As if, if the engine was totally upright, you go to put this tray in and these lifters will just want to fall out on you. So we go sideways to help us seat the cam tray without losing any lifters. Also, make sure you're putting it in the proper way. The letter of the cam tray will be forward facing. Uh, the letter A is German for the term exhaust. So this is the exhaust side. A is exhaust. A does not mean air. It goes on the exhaust side. Whereas the intake side will have an E on it. Go kind of fast with it. Just like that. There we go. No lifters fell out. Cam tray went right in. Okay, here we are. The engine is now seated upright. Now what's going to, go, what's going to happen is we go, we go to try to seat the intake camshaft tray over there. We're going to try putting it in here. Those lifters, they're going to fall right out due to gravity. So what I do is, I take something like this. If you don't know what this is, this stuff is used in shipping. It comes on large boxes that are heavy. usually helps hold them together. I'm going to take this stuff. I'm going to go off camera here. You still see it over there. I'm going to lay this across the bottom of that camshaft tray. I'm then going to make sure it's tight. Hold it, hold it on both sides. I'm then going to flip the tray. It's going to hold in those lifters as I walk it over here. Then you'll see how I remove it once I'm done. And one more time, the letter will be facing the front of the engine. And also, the letter E means intake, not exhaust. So do not get that confused, okay? Now, we're simply just going to take this rope or string, whatever. We're just going to 
get some tension off of it. We're stuck on it. There we go. And pull this right out. Okay, so here we are. We just uh, put the cams into their trays. Now, you're going to feel that they're going to want to go a certain way. Like, they're just going to want to rest in a certain fashion. I like to get them as close to TDC as possible before I even start bolting them down. That is indicated by, on the back of the camshaft, there's little dots right here. See that? When they're straight up in the air, uh, facing straight up, I mean, that indicates that the cylinder head is at TDC. You can also see the letter back here, which indicates which cam it goes to. I mean, which side, that is. Once again, the E is for intake, and then that will have an A on the back. But yeah, just make sure your little dots are as close, as straight up as possible. They're going to be kind of like this. The dots are here and here. That's where they want to start as we start clamp clamping them down. So, I'm going to go grab the trays and things. But before I do, I'm going to put some oil and just dump it along these journals. We're going to take our camshaft caps. They are also numbered in a certain series. They also have the letters on them too. This one says, if you guys can see that, A3. So this will go in the third, the third position of this camshaft. Now the very front ones will indicate which direction these go. So you want to pull the front one out, which is the largest cap. has that little flange in general on the back there. That is the first one, as indicated by A1 there. It'll go forward as this bigger lip right here will face the back front of the cam. So it's going to go on this way. Then you want to match each number and letter variation with that direction. Keep them on the same side. So here's A1, A3, Once all of the camshaft caps are on, go ahead and just wiggle the cam a little bit once and more. You see how they just kind of dropped these ones here? That's going to help us get the first thread started with the nuts here. We'll go to the exhaust side do the same thing. We'll just kind of shake the cam a little bit. Now it's time for the nuts, which are in this little container here. I'm going to just look around and find which ones are kind of hanging up some. This intake one's a little grumpy. I'm gonna, I found one right here though, right here. We're gonna go with this cap. Now the ultimate goal here is to definitely, definitely take your time with this. Tighten these down very, very slowly and keep it even as possible. So you're not cracking or breaking a camshaft, okay? Okay, once the camshafts are all evenly torqued down, they're not, they haven't been actually torque wrenched yet. We're going to fasten these to 11 foot pounds. Before that, I want to make sure there's no binding. I want to make sure they're going to spin smoothly in their trace here. So I'm going to take a T50. I'm going to go to the front of these and go in the socket in the bolt head here. These are very tight, so they should not loosen on you. You can also get the proper size wrench to grab right here because there is a nice indentation here for a wrench but I don't have the proper size wrench here at my house. I'm not saying to do full, to do full, a full revolution, just some back and forth things right there to help really bed the cam. It feels good to me, it feels really nice. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and uh, torque these cams down now. Okay, it's time to torque down these camshafts. Once again, 11 foot pounds, or in my case, with an inch pound torque wrench, 132 inch pounds. I'm gonna work in the middle and work my way out. There we go. That's it. The camshafts are all now torqued up. We can move on. We can uh, move forward and do the uh, timing and then installation of the Vanos. Let's do that. And here is the back of the cylinder head. As you can see, these dots, as I mentioned earlier, are now facing pretty much straight up and down. This indicates the cylinder head is placed at TDC. Now, while we're up front doing all the Vanos activities, these cannot move on us. They must stay where they're at. So you got to get a hold of a certain kind of tool set uh, designed to time a dual Vanos and single Vanos engine. 
I recommend buying a reputable brand. But here are the cam blocks. Before they can go in, you must remove these studs here for the valve cover. They are 10 millimeters. Then you take the, the mating piece up here and it just bolts these together so they can't move. And there we are. Once you verify your cams are nice straight up and down and they're locked into place, we can then go back to the front of the engine and work with the actual timing now. So we'll get that done. Okay, here's the front, here's the front of the engine. We have the intake and exhaust camshaft. We're going to work on the timing now. So first things first, since the cylinder head is at TDC, go back to your crankshaft and make sure the bottom end is at TDC. Once that's justified, you have your timing marks all lined up. We're going to work on installing this primary exhaust uh, camshaft sprocket. Now, do take note, as you see, the cylinder head is pretty much bare up here. There are no components, uh, including this guide, which goes right here. That is not installed yet, nor is the secondary timing chain tensioner. That is, that is not installed. We also do not have the primary chain tensioner, which goes down here. That is not installed. You just want the chain free floating. You also make sure the studs are not installed here yet. You just want a bare cam, chain just flopping, and you want to get your sprocket ready. Key note, there is an arrow on this sprocket. See the arrow right here on the plastic? It is going to align with the deck surface of the cylinder head when it's in installed properly. Okay, so we're going to take our sprocket. We're going to bring it in here. Get your chain ready. Now you're going to apply your own tension. So grab the chain on the left-hand side and just pull up on it, make sure it's tight. You're going to get the sprocket in here, grab some teeth, and you're going to visualize the sprocket aligning with that cylinder head, the arrow. Just get as close as you can and slide it onto the camshaft like that. That looks pretty good, right? Now, if you see, it looks like it's kind of pointing too high. That is because there's no tension on the on that on that uh, timing chain guide. So, take a finger and manually press on that guide. Now you can see we are lined up. That is what you want because with tension, that is where that sprocket is going to be. As you can see, it's lined up with that deck surface of that head pretty dang nicely. Now we're gonna go ahead and go back to our Venos timing tool, and we're going to grab its included tensioner, which is going to take place in my finger in here. Okay, and here's the included tensioner in that kit. It's just a real simple threaded in solution here, has a middle stud with it, or a middle bolt. I'm going to purposely bring this up too high again. I'm going to take this included tool, I'm going to Thread it into the location of the primary tensioner. There we go. Then I'm going to tighten this, and it will draw down that arrow to the cylinder head. You don't want this thing very tight. You just want to bring it so it's like finger tight. I want to call that good right there. That's all you got to do. Now you can work with the rest of the timing. It is now time to install these studs for the exhaust camshaft. Put them in. They are a 12 millimeter size socket and they will get torqued to 15 foot pounds. There are three of them. I'm now going to install this lower timing chain guide for the secondary uh, chain here. It should pop right in just like that. And then it is fastened with two E8 Torx bolts. We have one long one like this. It goes the whole way through the head. And then the short one like that. Short one goes up front here. Long one goes in the back here. It's going to snake right past this intake cam here. And run right through the cylinder head. There it goes. And this front one is going to just fit just right in here. I am now going to install the secondary timing chain tensioner. There are three lengths of bolts that fasten it. There is this long one here, which will pass through the front of it like that. Then we have two medium length ones, which will go 
and the back like that. And then we have one short one, which goes in the very back. Okay, now we're going to lock this down with a pin such as this, just to hold it in the collapsed uh, position. We're now going to grab this part here for the exhaust sprocket, but before that we're going to grab one of the, the cups that go in here. And right here it is. They are the same exact part for both the intake and exhaust. It goes on one way. You want this little portion here is a little window cut out and it facing outward and that is going to correspond with inside of here see that larger tooth on the top of that it's going to slide right in just like that see that it kind of spins as it's being moved we're then going to place that on the exhaust cam it can only go on one way that it will let you big tooth will also go on the big slot on the camshaft there it goes right there and then going to push this in about right there so key note here is the way i time these engines uh may not be for everybody but i've done these multiple times i've timed these things at a racetrack without any special tools and things like that so i'm very used to how these these should be spaced in and out okay now i'm going to uh take another part of the exhaust sprocketry here this is going to be the secondary main sprocket, which ties both cams together, okay? You see how this is zip-tied together? That is simple. Whenever you're tearing apart these engines, do not lose the way that these are configured, okay? You want to fasten the chain together because this is very important. This is actually what times your Venos. So I'm going to simply snip off the zip tie. I'm going to place these on now. I'm going to also, before I put these on, I want to get the intake cup and put it in here, okay? There it goes. Put it on there like that. Watch your timing chain. Make sure it seats in the lower guide and clears the tensioner. You're then going to spin this cup on this side until it grabs the intake cam. There it goes. Set this up here, just like that. And I like to position this cup once more, basically so the teeth are flush about right there. Now we're going to grab these Torx bolts for the exhaust side. They are also an E8. Just thread those in. And then these get torqued to also 15 foot pounds. Once again, my methods of timing these engines are not gonna be for everybody. So do not follow me to a T, okay? Now there's more parts to go on both the exhaust and intake side. Little spacer washer here. You also see the very edge of this is worn from this piece here. This is like a spring washer. So it's going to hit, see where it's hitting? It's going to hit just like that. The F on this indicates front. So you really can't mess that up. I'm gonna place this on now. Just like that. Then we're going to take this spring washer here, put on here just like that. And then there's one more part to the exhaust side. It's going to be this piece right here, okay? And if, as you can see, there's an arrow on it. Just like the very first sprocket we put on this engine. Hopefully you can see that arrow. It's going to also face the deck surface of the head whenever it's assembled. These uh, nuts right here, there's going to be three of them. Just going to thread them on just like this. Now, you do not want to torque these yet. Just want to get them finger tight. Okay. Just like that. Once again, do not torque those. We're now going to put the spring plate on the intake cam. Right here. And it also says front. It might be hard to see with the way that the varnish has faded it. But it also says front on the bottom right there. Just like that. And this also gets attached using three nuts. Okay, so now with these nuts, final nuts finger tight, I'm going to pull this pin up here, pressure down the tensioner, 
pull the pin out and just let it come up. Now I'm going to tighten the final nuts here, uh, these six 10 millimeters. The final torque spec for these is 7.5 foot pounds. I'm just going to put them to around 96 inch pounds. There we go. We can also go ahead and remove our makeshift uh, chain tensioner here. We're going to put back in the proper one. It looks like this. A spring goes inside of it like that. Here's the original spring. Here is a new one. As you can see, it shrunk about one coil, which isn't anything too excessive, but I mean, it can add up for sure when it comes to a spring. We're going to torque this to 52 foot pounds. There we go. We have our uh, fresh gasket here on the cylinder head for the Vanos assembly. Here is the Vanos housing. I did rebuild it off camera as if I included the rebuild process in this video, it'd be a very long video and make the duration even more excessive. So there's the assembly there. Now what retains it, we're going to have six 10 millimeter nuts. And then a 13 millimeter stud fastener here. It appears as such. It goes in this top right corner here. Okay, once the housing is fastened to the head, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some uh, T30 screws in here or T30 bolts. They're actually going to fasten those cups to the Venos pistons in here. And also key note, these bolts are reverse thread, so you'll be turning to the left to tighten them. Okay, once those are tight, you have these little plastic caps that take O-rings. You can see the O-ring on there or not. That's that's actually going to it's, go, it's going to snap into the face of the piston. It's just a little it's like an oil cap to make sure the piston stays sealed up. Now we move on to the last cap, these little cap bolts with a crush washer to seal them. They go in right here. They take an eight millimeter Allen and they are obviously not reverse thread. They're just normal thread. That should be good to go. That's how you secure the Vanos. Time to replace the Vanos supply line, 19 millimeter banjo bolt up there. Gonna use a ratchet wrench on it. There we go. There's a banjo bolt. They take crush washers to seal. Going to get our new hose here. Uh, the more harder angled end will be down here. Just like that. Good enough. And here is the front of the Vanos hose. It's going to bolt right here to the Vanos assembly. Same thing. Got a banjo bolt here with some crush washers. There we go, okay. Once you verify the engine is indeed in time and everything, it's time to seal it up with the valve cover. Before that happens, there's a few things to accomplish. We're going to clean the surface in which the gasket will be contacting the cylinder head and around the spark plug wells. Once again, with some acetone and some rags and some scraping if need be. We're also going to take some RTV gasket maker once again. We're going to apply it where the Vanos unit meets the cylinder head. This line here and this line over here. So now we're going to prepare the valve cover itself to place on the engine. And here's the valve cover itself uh, with the gasket already installed. Here's the primary gasket. We're also going to install the spark plug well gaskets. They're going to simply press into the cover just like the primary one. Just with your fingers, really easy to do. We're going to do both of those here in a second. There's also 15 fasteners to hold the valve cover to the engine. These are called cap bolts. We have to install these new grommets on each and every one, okay? Once this is complete, we can now go ahead and just toss this in real quick. 
and to the valve cover. Once your valve cover and hardware are ready to go, I'm going to go back to the engine and show you how these actually fasten down. Because I see a lot of guys snapping these off. Uh, there's really no, really no need to over tighten these. I'm going to show you exactly how these things work. Here we have one of the cap bolt studs for the valve cover. And here we have, obviously, one of the cap bolts. You're going to find out, uh, while fastening your valve cover down, that these cap bolts will simply bottom out on their studs. Once you reach that point right there, you need nothing more than a simple quarter turn with your ratchet to tighten it down. That is all you need. Or, you will simply snap the stud off. Because what actually seals the valve cover up are these grommets. They're going to squeeze and compress the valve cover downward as you're tightening. So once these cap bolts reach this stud, it's basically already sealed up anyway. You're just doing that final cinch to ensure these don't come loose. Also, before the valve cover goes on, you cannot forget to install this camshaft cover. This will go on the intake side. It's simply here to avoid excessive oil from splashing and leaving the valve cover vent. So this is going to help captivate the oil so it can't exit the valve cover. It simply snaps on just like that. This valve cover is now evenly seated to the cylinder head by starting in the middle and working my way outward to ensure that I was laying it flat while I was fastening it. Every time I felt a stud down below, nothing more than a quarter turn addition with the ratchet to ensure it was tight. That is all that these things take. This valve cover is now sealed up very well. Well, what do you guys think? I think as far as this video goes, we are done for the day. I'm going to get this video made up for you guys to watch. I'm satisfied with how much we covered, how much we've gotten done to this little budget project engine. Now, as far as this vanity cover goes, who recognizes it? I'm going to say very few, unless you're an original viewer of mine, because years ago, this was on my turbo car. It has been sitting on my shelf forever. It actually needs persuasion to be not warped. Kind of depressing. Look at that crack and that warpage. Jeez. Oh, well, it's on there for funsies, I guess. But yeah, if you guys are happy with the, the progress so far, just let me know. I'm pretty satisfied with it. Hopefully it runs freaking awesome. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I greatly appreciate it as these, as these cars are my life. And it's all I basically live for anymore. So any kind of love I receive from you guys means a lot to me. Uh, really appreciate it. But as far as tonight goes, I'm going to get the rest of this video edited up. And I'm going to upload it. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have yourselves a good, good night, good day, wherever you're from. And I'll see you later.